Hi, and thanks for watching this section of Space Claims Basic Training on the Select Tool. Today we'll go over the Select Tool and talk about different ways to use it and what they all mean. Now, the Select Tool is primarily used as a way to grab different faces or edges or points uh, when you need to edit or modify them. So, to start off, the easiest way to select anything, you first want to have the Select button uh, initiated or highlighted, and then hover over any entity on your model and left click and you've selected it. Now you can select any face or any edge that you want as well as any point just by hovering over them. Now if I look in the lower right of the, of the screen I've got a message box right now that says one vertex and this tells me what I currently have selected. So as I grab an edge or a face that indicator changes. Now to add different things to my selection the best way to do that is to hold down the control button and then start selecting any combination of edges or faces or points that I want. And as I do this, you can see the indicator in the lower right will change, and it tells me all the different things I have selected. Now what about grabbing things in a little bit more of an intelligent way? If I double click on a face, then Space Claim will grab all the tangent faces uh, connected to that one I double clicked. So I'll try it again on another and all those faces uh, are selected. Now what happens if I grab a face where there is nothing tangent to it? If I double click on that, then nothing happens. Only the face is selected because there's nothing else tangent, so it's grabbing only the face. Now if I double click on an edge, Space Claim will grab the tangent chain, but it also takes it a step further. So I double click on an edge, I get the tangent chain. If I double click again on that edge, I'll get a small loop. If I double click a third time, then I'll get a large loop that's selected. So Space Claim will, will cycle through the tangent chain, then a small loop, and then a large loop. So we'll show it again on this other edge. Double click once to get the tangent chain, double click twice to get a small loop, and a third time to get a large loop. Now if I double click on an edge where there is no tangent chain, Space Claim will just cycle through the different loop scenarios, different possibilities, and as I keep double clicking, it'll just cycle through those. And that's true on any edge that I double that I double click. It'll just continue to cycle through. Now what happens when I triple click on a body? We've looked at uh, single clicking, double clicking. When I triple click, the entire body is selected. Now it's important to note you have to be on a face in order to initiate this. And this is really just a shortcut for selecting the solid or the body in the structure tree. So if I triple click on an edge, nothing will happen besides grabbing uh, the tangent chain or the loop of that edge. The body won't be selected. Remember you have to grab, you have to triple click on a face. Now let's talk about box select. And this is by default, uh, this is what's turned on when the select tool is initiated. The way to initiate this is to click and drag. Now I'm going to go from left to right right now, and this is important to note. We'll go from right to left in a moment. But anything that fits entirely within this box becomes selected. So right now it's just a point. And as I start to move and an edge becomes entirely within the box, Space Claim will up-select and start grabbing things that are higher up in priority, namely edges right now. Once I have an entire face that fits within the box, now I'm only selecting faces and I can continue to do that. So as I make the box a little bit smaller and there's no faces within, I'm grabbing just edges. As I get to just a point, it's going back to just a point. Now an option to uh, control the smart select is down in the lower right. If I click on the selection filter button, Right now, Smart Select is selected. Let's, let's unselect it. And faces and points are deselected and only edges and a few other things that I don't have on the screen. So now, when I use the box select with, with just the edges present, anything that I select, anything I box select, I'm only going to get edges showing up. No faces or no points. So this gives you a little bit more control over how you want to select entities in your model. And let's just turn this back to uh, Smart Select for now. Now, that's how we would use Box Select going from left to right. If we go from right to left, 
you notice that the box changes. I get uh, more of a dotted line or a hidden line uh, going throughout. In this case, anything that just touches the box, it doesn't have to fit entirely within it, but just touches the edges, that gets selected. And with Smart Select enabled, um, I'm only going to be selecting faces right now. Well, let's try this again and take Smart Select off. And now faces and points are deselected, and edges are the only thing that I have present on the screen. So let's try this going from right to left. I just touch that edge, and now it's any edge that, I'm, that I've touched in any way becomes selected. So we'll go ahead and turn Smart Select back on because that's the default. Now let's look at the next uh, next different way to select things. It's called the Lasso Tool. This is useful if you have a lot of complicated geometry and maybe the Select Tool uh, becomes a little bit difficult to use. The way to initiate the Lasso Tool is similar to the Box Select, but it's, it's also to click and start dragging. But I have a free form line that I'm creating. Now anything that fits within this lasso I'm created becomes, uh, becomes part of my selection. So it's just a different way uh, to grab things in a very selective manner. Now the third one we'll look at uh, under this pull down is the Paint tool, or using uh, a select with paint. The way this works is similar. If I, I need to click on a face and, and hold down my left mouse button, and as I start to drag the mouse, anything that it touches, it's acting just like a paintbrush, anything it touches um, now becomes part of the selection. And so I'm only grabbing faces right now. Now let's initiate the select tool, I'm sorry, the paint tool in white space. As I do that, I've just clicked and I'm dragging. The first thing it's going to touch is a line or an edge. And so now, anytime I, I move the mouse cursor over an edge, those are all selected, no faces. So it's important to note that the first thing that you touch with the paint tool, that's the type of entity you're going to be selecting. Now the last thing we'll look at is something called Query Select, and this is a very powerful way to grab things that you cannot see on the screen. Let's say that I need to grab things behind or on the other side of this model, uh, but I can't see them and I don't want to rotate the model around. Well, I'll hover the mouse over where I think that entity is, and if I roll the wheel up once, Space Claim will look right behind the cursor, right behind the pointer of the mouse, and find uh, the next thing behind it. In this case, there's only one face. Not only will it do that, but it will look for entities very close to the mouse. So maybe I want to select the point where those uh, two faces, where those uh, two edges meet as well. But it's difficult to select. Well, I can use the Query Select. I'm going to roll up once. Now I have the point selected and I have an edge selected if I roll another time. And as I keep rolling, it will cycle through different things that are either very close to the cursor or now are right behind it. So it's a very powerful way to grab things you can't see. And as I start to roll down, it will cycle back through that list until I get to where my mouse originally was. So I hope you found this useful. We've looked at different ways to select, uh, namely, control select to grab multiple entities, box selecting, and how to use query select. Thank you very much for watching.